All right, hey there, I'm just gonna give you an update on the Bronco project. So here's what we got. Right now I've got the body off for about the 20th time, I'd say. Putting in the fuel cell in the back. Making sure we got clearance to the rear axle. Before this ever sees any rocks or anything, we're gonna wanna get a uh, nice strong skid plate built for it. That's full stuff right there, so I will have much taller tires. I'll show you these guys here. See, this is a spring purchase. And what's going on is those bolt through the floor of the of the truck and bolt up to the roll cage, which I haven't started yet. Extra cross member, gonna put in two extra cross members back here, another ex, another cross member here that's gonna can of lever out for the shock mounts. Uh, two extra cross members under here, uh, to pick up transmission, uh, radius arms, and trailing arms. Front suspension's all, uh, for the most part, done. I might add a second set of shocks, front and rear, depending on how it comes out. Uh, it didn't come out with 20 inches of front and, wheel and rear wheel travel. Uh, that's at bump and strap, 20 inches. Got some more uh, fabrication in here. There'll be a kind of a strut tower brace that comes up over to pick up those points. Um, I've got the, I've got here the, uh, the F-150 or full-size Bronco, uh, sway bar. Uh, I've got to relocate that further forward and I might have to go with different lengths than the stock ones, but right now I just have the stock ones sitting in there off of the, uh, Dana 44 axles, which we've cut radius arms, extended them. Nine inch rear end, of course. Got four tens front and rear. Uh, C6 transmission, uh, 351 small block. And I'm going with, let's see. And what I'm going with here is I've got Jeg's uh, high rise intake and a Pytech EFI system. And I'm also going to run the uh, aftermarket distributor off of that. I'll be my first for that, so uh, we'll see how that comes out. So I'll get some better looking aluminum intakes on it. Um, exhaust, pretty tricky. We've got to remove a little bit more frame in here and maybe add some more reinforcement there. I know for the drive shaft on the passenger side here, it's gonna get pretty tight. I'm pretty sure I'll be trimming some of this once you're full stuff. When you bring that up, of course, it moves in inboard a little bit, so you shouldn't have to remove much, but it'll be enough that I'll want to add some kind of reinforcement member. I've added clearance around this transfer case. Unfortunately, I've moved it so many times that if I get a good shot of that, you see I've lost a lot of frame there, so some of that's going to go back in. I had the same situation here where I've added stuff back in and how I'm cutting more back out. Not fully happy with the engine. I'd like it to sit lower, but um, if I do this again, I will make a another uh, custom oil pan that can go deeper. Kind of hard to see in there, but this is a custom built oil pan where I move the sump back and I move the pickup tube inside back. So that's where we're at right now. I'm gonna to try to get this tank mounted up. I'm just gonna weld on some flanges and bolt right down to the frame. I've got good access from above here. There's about four inches of space under the body between the frame rails in the back of these little Bronco two bodies. Um, another thing I would have really liked to do on this project would be to fully box the frame. But because of situations like this, 
and over there it would have gotten really really complicated um, that said you know this thing is actually going to be a desert racing machine but it could definitely do some pre-running i think be a lot of fun that the michigan uh silver lake sand dunes which is where i'm gonna take it oh the next thing i got to do also uh next steps is exhaust that's just i just got my exhaust pipe in waiting on some mandrel bends to fill it all out but it will be a full two and a half inch um full through full flow exhaust which i'm gonna probably drop in either right here on both sides a set of two and a half inch borla mufflers resonators resonator tips if necessary just to get the sound under control i want to be able to daily drive this so i don't want to blowing my ears out or the neighbors or just being obnoxious or annoying while i'm going down the road but i want i want that mean grumble that i should get out of this v8 you know when we're climbing the dunes and the windows are down the tops off um, in the next episode i will i will update with uh, the body work and show you where that's at um, this is of course full-size axle so that widens out the, the whole thing you know what we're going for here is the bronco warthog raptor bronco r whatever they're going to call it but i'm building my own version out of a bronco too and i do have one on reserve so we'll see how that we'll see how that comes out but uh yeah oh another thing about this i've stressed the wheel base so this rear axle is back and i forget the dimension but i, I think it's a stretch of seven inches overall on wheelbase and the wheel track i don't remember it's just the difference between the full size and the, and the little little bronco two axles to something like a foot i want to say maybe six inches each side um and i'm going to use some pretty uh positively offset wheels um, in fact raptor spec wheels and tires which will keep the overall wheel track um you know reasonable i don't want the tires sticking way out but the extra width is going to be nice for on-road stability and high speed off-road running and uh same with the, the wheelbase the extra length you guys don't want to see me you want to see the project so uh yeah i'll just include some snapshots where you can see everything all in one shot Oh yeah, and then just got some brake lines in and start riding brakes, running brakes all, all the way through. Um, I'm hoping the stock brake system off of the Bronco 2 will be good enough to run these larger brakes. I believe it will handle it. We'll see how that works. Oh yeah, got to make drive shafts. Um, my rear drive shaft's about an inch and a half short. That's just a stock full-size Bronco shaft. My front one is way too long. I'm going to cut it down. Get those balanced because they are going to be on the road. Like I say, I want this thing to be my daily driver when I'm done for a while. And our weekend toy for the family. So it's going to be, the, it'll have a full interior, which I'm planning on doing a, a custom-built interior for that as well. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Oh, yeah. I haven't started on the suspension or the front steering. There's going to be a swing set steering system up here so that it all operates well in phase. And I guess um, I'll have to make a whole video on just that because you don't have to get your phase, your uh, your points perfectly in phase with your axles to eliminate bump steer, but you want to get it as close as you can. One thing that I see a lot of people make a mistake on this with uh, is they try to put their mount directly in line with their front, uh, their, their axle, the traction beam pivot point. If you put it directly in front of it, you got to think of these twin I-beams as actually just a single set of large lower wishbones because that's what they are. They're a big A, a, a you know, A-frame. So... When, it's, when that's pivoting, when you're drooping or compressing, where these points are, there's two points. You got that and then where your radius arm mounts. And on mine, I've got them just under the frame. That's pretty much in line with the factory Fords were set up. I've just got them further back down the frame. Sometimes I'll set those inboard on the frame. 
um, gives you a little bit better, a little bit more of an A-arm type of a swing suspension rather than this slightly awkward uh, setup here where you're getting a caster and camber change throughout your uh, travel. But anyway, what you want to do is you want to line up your points, all three points, not just this one in your tie rod. You want to line up that radius arm point, this point in space, and draw a line through those and that where that intersects your tie rod is where you actually want to try to get that pivot at. And yeah, so there'll be a swing set set up here, pusher, and then cross links both ways so that we're uh, we're actually pivoting in the right locations. Um, these are totally bone stock axles, other than I of course uh, cut extended the radius arms, and that's where they, where they're going to stay as far as I'm concerned. I would like to get a selectable locker in the front before we ever take this thing out to any real serious trails, but. We'll leave it open for the sand. All right, that's all I got for this one. See you next time.